Okay, we started our trip way later than planned. It's about 6.30, but anyways, we are on our way. Will we get to the Dry Tortugas, Key West, or the Marquesas? We may never know. We're sailing! So we're going uh, around 10 knots and we have this confused sea because it's been blowing out of the south pretty good for the past couple days and we're going like south southwest basically and we'll get going pretty good and be surfing the the wind swell that's created from this wind but then all of a sudden we'll stop short in these these south swells that are residual from the past couple days kind of annoying thank you it's a lot rougher than i was hoping days for me where I felt like I needed to throw up and I couldn't throw up and then you just feel how do you feel? I feel alright. I'm surprised. I only got like an hour of sleep last night. And I thought I was going to be exhausted. And I was on the helm all day long. You weren't feeling too hot. Billy did all day long for me. What a gem. So I, I thought it'd be feeling worse than I am. I'm just a little bit tired and it, as soon as we get in and drop the hook, I'm gonna be so shot. But besides that, I'm right. It was just annoying, an annoying seas today. Just totally confused and lighter wind and forecasted, so we were flapping around a little bit. But it went all right, we're there. We're not there, we still have eight miles. Which could be another two hours. We made it. And there's a heck of a lot of boats in here. Good morning! I feel like I just came out of coma for 20 years. I spent a helm, we calculated 14 hours yesterday straight on the helm. We did 112 miles, we averaged eight and a half knots, which is pretty dang bad. I was really hoping to average 10 knots, but I think the wind just, between the wind and the confused seas, and I, and I was assuming we were loaded up pretty good, which we are. But I think between the wind being a little bit lighter and the confused seas, it was hard to get that average. I think we actually did average nine knots under sail. And then we had this last like couple hour run where we had to really head downwind and slow down uh, to get into the park here. This is where we are right now, Dry Tortugas, which is uh, 
about 70 miles off of Key West. So Key West is right here, 70 miles, and we came from all the way up here, from just south of Marco Island, down. And for breakfast, we're gonna have some toast with peanut butter and banana and honey and cinnamon and nutmeg. And then we're gonna take Jetty for a walk. And then what are we gonna do? I don't know. We don't know yet. Explore? We're happy to be here though. It's not crystal clear, but we're in the harbor. But still, the water all around here looks nice and blue. Okay, stay here. You just gotta fill out a boat permit. Um, just probably all the basic information. It doesn't cost anything, but I think there still is an, a separate entrance fee. 15 bucks per person um, for seven days, I believe. Six or seven days. Yeah, valid for seven days. You're supposed to take the stub or whatever that means. Keep this receipt. Time to go walk around. Ooh, why is it so brown? So last time we could come here and we could walk this whole beach, but I think it's like a certain season for the birds to come in, so the whole area is closed. But there are a heck of a lot of birds. Beautiful. Did you tell them we were able to walk there last time? Look at all the birds. I think we're probably bothering them, so let's go. Alright. When we were here last time, they were doing construction on the whole thing, and it's all these bottom windows that they fixed. Oh, yeah. There's loggerhead key out there. Yeah, four, three or four. I think four. it was a solid four years ago we were here. One of our very first trips in Adrenaline. Have we changed much? What do you think? I think you got a little younger. Can we cross? Yeah, we can. Try to jump it. Well, if we can't cross that one, we shouldn't even try. Cross this one. pictures of like the male and female frigate and one has like the big red ruby red like under their throat and I've never seen it in person but all the frigates in the tree they all have it but we can't get close enough to see it yeah this is what's called bird key I think and it's always closed this this little island there's a little cut right there that makes bird key its own island yeah that's cool though we didn't really like come around here with the dinghy last time we were here no, we went out. We took the dinghy far to Loggerhead Key and to that shipwreck. So we're in, there's a buoy right here that says keep out and then a buoy over here. We're actually right on the border. So we that's where you're not allowed to cross to go into this area. Wow, that's really cool. There's the fort over that direction. 
So this guy, they have that little red thing, but it's like not inflated. We gotta do more research on what exactly that is. It's pretty cool. Frigates everywhere. Have you ever seen so many frigates in one spot? All of these birds are frigates and there's some pelicans in there and other birds, but almost all of them are frigates. Wind might be a little bit light, but we gotta give it a shot. We just got linked up with Cabrino. They're one of our affiliate partners now, which is amazing, because that's the gear I've been using forever. They gave us a discount code to give to you guys, so if you guys are interested in and getting any Cabrina gear or anything like that, just check out the link in the description. The discount code will be down there. Always looking to save you guys some money if you can, and we do earn a commission on that if we sell anything. So it helps us out, helps the channel out, and hopefully it helps you out if you're interested in getting into kiteboarding. Here we go, let's go. I never attach it to myself when we're doing that, just in case something gets nagged and goes wrong. It's not attached to me, it's attached to the boat. And I could easily pull the release and release the kite from the boat if it was ever a big problem. It'll just sit over there. You see me like going downwind, just start coming to get me. And what, our dinghy? Yeah, love. The dinghy will go faster. It'll go faster than I will with the kite downwind if I'm like trying to stay upwind. Billy just gave me a wave and called me over. I don't think there's enough wind for him to get back to the boat. So we're going to rescue him and the dinghy. left in this thing so he's really gotta come back let's keep it neutral <laughs> go uh, reverse So was that fun or frustrating? Yeah. It's always cool to kite a new spot, especially in clear water, and just check it out by kite. But it is very frustrating when it's like barely enough wind to ride, can't really stay upwind, 
Just need a little more wind or a slightly bigger kite or a slightly bigger board or a foil. What would you have done without me? Well, I knew you were there. I wouldn't have gone out today if you weren't there. You always got to have one or two exit plans. But I talked to you right before I left and I said, if you see me going downwind even just a little, can you come get me? And you said, yep. So you came and got me. I'm the dinghy rescue crew. Fucking me, I must be, I must be good to you. Because you came and got me. <laughs> I could have just let you fly away. So where would you have ended up? Cuba? I don't know. I think it would have froze to death before I got to Cuba. <laughs> Oh man, so I don't know if you guys noticed, we moved spots from where we were at the other day. We were like right next to all these boats and uh, we just pulled up all the boards and came to this spot where we're all by ourselves in some super shallow water, like two feet of water. So I think we're leaving tomorrow. We didn't stay here very long because it's been super windy. Oh. So windy that it's too windy and rough to go to the wreck, but not windy enough be good enough to kite. <laughs> we just need a bigger kite. Actually, so we're just in the middle. Sierra, I think we need a hydrofoil. So a, we're just in the middle. Can I get a hydrofoil? And it's pretty crowded here. Not complaining at all, but it's just not what we were expecting when we got here. And we haven't seen the Marquesas yet. So I think we're going to go there tomorrow, spend a couple days. Yep. So what the Marquesas keys are just a few little keys, maybe 30 or 40 miles off of Key West, probably 30 miles. They're 40 miles from us. Yeah, so 30 miles off Key West, maybe even slightly less. So we've heard it's really cool. Um, it's super shallow to be able to get to a good anchorage there. And we can do just that because we don't require we much can, water. We can get all the way to the inside, which will be protected from all around. I think it's supposed to be calm for like three days. So hopefully we'll get some diving in. And then our Florida loop has pretty much come to an end. We've already done this whole coast. So I think we're just gonna cruise. I mean, we'll still complete the loop, but we'll just kind of hop along the keys and, and, and kind of shoot back pretty quick. And maybe, maybe if we get a chance to dive some more or whatever in between, we will, but we'll stop and enjoy the scenery on our way. So even though we haven't done too much here, like at least we got a little kiting in today, we've been walking around the fort and everything. We didn't even go in the fort this time because we can't with Jetty and we already have been there. If we had another day or two, we would have. But it's still been so nice just being in this clear, clear water and just watching these birds all around us. All the frigates over there on Bird Island and all these birds constantly going nuts on land over here. It's been pretty dang cool. The hardest part about making dinner is that there's only one burner, so I did everything one at a time, but I think it came out pretty tasty looking, don't you? Okay, we are off again to the Marquesas, untouched territory for us, and we are flying the Screecher with the mainsail, and we are cruising at six and a half to seven knots. We are lucky enough to have a nice little breeze this morning. It's, it was only supposed to be forecasted five to ten all day. So hopefully this breeze that's like probably 12 knots or gusting a little higher sticks around, and we're just on a broad reach flying the Screecher. Good conditions out here. Nice and calm compared to last time on our way here. Don't jinx it's, it. Uh, it's just beautiful out. Can't wait to check out the Marquesas because we've never been there before. And we'll be able to get like way up in the lagoons and stuff, I think. So it should be pretty cool.
There's the Marquette Sis Keys right over there. We're just sailing around to the other side, to the south side, where we think there's a few entrances to get into the lagoon. Are you excited? Yes, I am. We love seeing places we've never seen before. And the sail here was much calmer than the sail to the Georgia River. And we were pleasantly surprised with a bit more wind that was forecasted, which was really, really nice. So we're just skirting around the south east corner of the Marquesas Keys over here. There's a few little cuts to get into the lagoon. We're gonna see which one looks best, could feel our way up in there. We're anchored at another brand new location that we've never been before. And we're in the lagoon here on the inside of the Marquesas Keys. Pretty cool spot. And we spotted a little beach on our way in. So we're gonna launch the dinghy here, go check out the beach. So if you guys haven't been able to tell already, our microphone is on the fritz and our audio is getting pretty messed up. Sorry about that. We spent the afternoon here in the Marquesas Keys just exploring, dinging around and checking out one of the empty beaches close by to where we anchored. We came across this really neat abandoned Cuban refugee boat, as well as a bunch of little camps, what looked like little camps along the isolated beach there. There was a ton of plastic garbage along this beach, as well as some derelict fishing gear, including a bunch of cool little buoys. So the Marquesas Keys is a series of mangrove islands with a big lagoon in the middle called Mooney Harbor, which was actually formed by a meteorite impact. There are a ton of sharks and rays and just seagrass and an infinite amount of tidal creeks to explore. We could spend a week here just exploring the whole area and the empty beaches all around and dinging up and down the tidal creeks. It was a really, really neat spot. The Marquesas Keys is about 25 miles off of Key West and the whole area is about 12 square miles, including the lagoon in the middle. So before we left on this trip, Sierra was very concerned that this boat only had one stove uh, one burner she, and, no oven. and no oven and she was concerned how we were going to survive and so far I've you've been, been making lots of one pot wonders that's my term first of all <laughs> since when I came up with it when did you come up with it when I first told you and then you started using it yeah. and no. one of them has just been created what do you call this mess Chicken enchilada skillet. I didn't create it. I Pinterested it. However, we don't have internet, so I kind of winged it. Rice, beans, ground chicken or turkey, all in one pot for 30 minutes. How's it been cooking on just a one burner stove with no oven? Hasn't been bad. I've been planning and Pinteresting, so that's been helping. Last time was a little difficult. We had chicken with green beans and potatoes, but they were all made in a different pot or pan at a different time. Made the potatoes because they take the longest, then heated up the green beans and then cooked the chicken. But yeah, not bad at all. How about alcohol? Can you tell a big difference with an alcohol stove? Not not really, no. It's it's a little hard to like turn up and down, so we're just like trying to get the temperatures right, but yeah, not bad. 